Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. I appreciate it. I've got another Luminar quick tip for you today. And this quick tip is about how to sort of create and enhance a vintage look in your photos. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have this photo. Now I've done a little bit to it. And to be clear, this is an iPhone photo I took in London. It kind of has a vintage look already simply because it's an old storefront that I think has been converted to a tea shop. Let me show you the before. So there you go, if you look at it, it was really bright, overexposed. Um, frankly, I did a terrible job taking the photo, but I added the tone filter, added a lot of contrast, took down smart tone highlights and whites, and went from that to that. So I, I kind of saved the photo, for lack of a better word, and that's thanks to the tone filter. Um, however, we're talking about vintage, and so while I don't do vintage a lot, I like to do it for these kind of things, especially if they kind of look vintage already, like this one does to me. I like to accentuate that and now the obvious way to do that is using the matte look filter which is included in Luminar 2018. So um, if you don't have Luminar this is a pretty cool filter it allows you to do some neat stuff and I'm going to start with that one. So I just have to look at my notes. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the amount of um, the matte look filter to about 50. I'm going to add a little bit of fade here. Not a whole lot because um, I, just, I just don't like to overdo fade. I mean, you can easily go like that and, and it just starts looking foggy and faded, right? Um, and I don't want to do too much of that. Uh, I am going to bump up the contrast quite a bit, so let me do that. And if you look at that, that really brought back some of the, the color pop, if you will, or the contrast, uh, the color contrast between the, the more yellow um, areas and the, uh, the darker wood here, which I like. So I think that's looking better already. Um, vividness, I'm actually going to take that down a little bit because uh, I am going for a vintage look. I just want to take the sort of intensity of the color down, um, which is really not what I normally do uh, with my regular photos. But for vintage, I do. I want it to look like an older photo. So um, that's the basics of the matte look filter in terms of how you apply it. Now, if you haven't used this or just haven't spent any time on it, to me, one of the most powerful components of this filter is this uh, toning section. So you have a range, a hue, and a saturation slider. So let me just look at my notes. Um, range, I'm going to about 48-ish, uh, something like that. And the hue, I'm going to go all the way over here, kind of a little bit into the, well, not really a little bit, kind of a decent amount into the blue. And I'm going to leave saturation at 50. And so um, already I've kind of gone from that to that. And so I think it looks a little bit more faded, which makes sense, a little bit more vintage, which also makes sense because I'm using the matte look filter. Um, and then I like the colors a little bit better because of the toning um, that I did. But here's where um, I use more filters to really accentuate that look. And, there, and there's two filters I would normally choose from. Uh, the first one is split toning, and the second one is color balance. Now, it just so happens that my previous two um, Luminar quick tip videos. The first one was about color balance and the second one was about split toning. So uh, these hopefully are familiar to you because maybe you've been experimenting with the tools since then. But uh, with split toning, for example, I'm gonna go, let me see here, I just gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna go over here into kind of the bluish realm, something like that. And I don't wanna highly saturate. I don't wanna, you know, a lot of blue. I just wanna create a little bit softer yellow, uh, for lack of a better word. So let me show you what that did. More yellow, less yellow, right? And that's because most of the highlights are yellow. And so adjusting the highlights kind of into that grayish blue, almost a little bit of a lavender kind of color is taking away some of the intensity, which for me, I like because again, I'm trying to reduce the impact of some of the colors in the photo to make it look older. Um, the other thing I would do is do a little bit on the shadows as well. Let me do something like that. And let me check my notes here. So, you know, maybe something like that. Now, again, kind of faded, kind of blue, slightly. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's more in the gray realm anyway. But let me show you the before. To me, brighter, a little bit more vibrant, definitely more yellow. And with split toning, is able to tone that down, no pun intended, and get a better sort of color look for me. Um, at this point, I'd probably add a vignette and say I'm done. Um, however, the other thing, I'm going to just delete the split toning filter and go back to just having tone and matte look. And I'm going to show you what I do in color balance. It's kind of similar, uh, but I like color balance probably a little bit better for this because it gives you more control over the actual colors. So let me start here in shadows. I'm going to go, let's see, about negative, you know, 17 or 18 there. And for yellow and blue, I'm going to go positive 20 or so. So 
That made a big difference in my opinion. Let me show you the before and the after. I didn't touch contrast, but you can see the contrast is very much more intense, which I think looks good on this photo. It also creates a bit a softer look to me around the red. The red and the yellows are kind of you know more dominant, and now those colors to me are a bit more passive, for lack of a better word. And so all it did is adjust the shadows, and if you, if you look at the wood here, and that's where a lot of the shadow is, is in this door and these darker wood panels. Um, that's why I did that. I went more to the blues for the uh, shadows, and it just darkened up those, uh, which I think looks nice. Let me look at the mid-tones. I did a little bit here, something similar, but not quite as heavy. So like, you know, negative seven, maybe positive 10 or 12, something like that. Again, a little bit more of that look. And then in highlights, I did uh, actually went a little bit yellow here um, in the highlights just to bring back a little bit of that yellow that you see in the sign where it says Ver uh, Verde and Company. So there's the before and there's the after with the color balance filter. I like that quite a bit and at this point I think I would add a vignette and call it done. So I'm just going to go grab a vignette, stick that on there, something like that. It doesn't have to be a lot but I think we've come a long way from that to that. The only other thing I would suggest is this is when I may go back to the matte look filter and adjust the amount and the fade just to see if there's any more uh, sort of, of of that I want to pull out of the photo, right? So I might do a little bit more that and maybe a little bit more fade and I think it gives it a little bit of extra kick um, and makes it a little bit older. So again, you know, very different photo. Single exposure on the iPhone, way too bright. Frankly, um, I didn't do a good job as I said. Now, I think a lot more character, a lot more interest. I think it looks very vintage. I like the look personally. I think it looks really cool. And that's what I would do. So the tip really is when experimenting with the matte look filter, don't forget the toning section where you can mess around with colors. And then also consider using split toning and color balance to adjust the colors to create the mood that you want in your vintage photos. And that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. I'll be back with more tips and tricks and videos soon. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe, like, share, leave a comment if you have any other ideas for tips you'd like to see, and I'll do my best to get to them. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time, and adios, friends. See you later.